I recently interviewed a Colorado police officer who used to work for the Colorado Springs Police Department, and then he moved on to Westminster, but he still lives down here in Colorado Springs with his wife and kid, and uh, they're actually clients of mine, and I helped them buy a house a few years ago here in Colorado Springs, and I wanted to ask him what his experience was living in Colorado Springs and working for the police department down here. What was it like? What's the crime like? down here how does he feel about it how does he feel about the city in general so stay tuned well, i wanted to ask you about uh, your time and uh, the cspd and your uh, experience living in colorado springs so um just tell everybody about um, how long you've lived here and what it was like moving here i guess and then your um, experience working for the police department yeah, absolutely. Uh, so about 28 years old. So I've essentially lived half my life here and half my life in California on and off. So I was born here in Colorado, was out here until I was about 10, moved out to California, lived out there until I finished up college, came back out here in 2009 when I uh, started applying to different police departments. Uh, CSPD was the first department to pick me up and I started my career out there with them. Been out here since 2019 so about almost four years now uh came out in july 19 there okay um spent about two and a half years with cspd um most recently back up in uh, january of last year 22 went up to westminster and i've been there for a little over a year now so coming up on four years in, in law enforcement um time with cspd was great just kind of was looking for a change with departments and stuff so that's why i went up to uh westminster there but um kind of with cspd i had a little bit of a breakup so uh majority with uh patrol and then i went out and uh, started doing uh worked up in their com communication center and they're doing dispatching so. okay great so uh what was your time like uh working for colorado springs police department were you uh what what did i guess what did you do on a day-to-day -day basis and uh what did how have you come to feel about living in Colorado Springs since you've been here? Yeah, no, I, I, I love Colorado Springs. Uh, working for CSPD, uh, so CSPD is broken up essentially into four different divisions, right? So you have our Northwest Division, which is our Falcon Division, that kind of covers everything west of Union there, all the way up to basically the Air Force Academy and kind of InterQuest where, you know, okay. you got Top Golf and all that fun mm -hmm. jazz. Yep. And down south uh, goes a little bit uh a little bit past like garden of the gods is kind of where their their jurisdiction stops there you have where i live up in here up in stetson hills uh, which is east northeast of colorado springs there um and that's basically everything east of union all the way south down to like palmer park uh, mm -hmm. boulevard down there um and then you had where i worked which was our southeast part of town and that basically everything east of union it kind of make it simple right mm -hmm. everything yep. east of union there south of palmer park basically down to the fountain border line there down to fountain um and then you have the southwest part of portion which is our gold hill and that encompasses downtown old colorado city all that um mm -hmm. down there uh, my time, you know, I, I spent my entire uh, patrol career down in Sand Creek, which is our southeast part of town, which is a, a fun area to work for sure. Um, day to day. Um, so I, I worked a portion on day shift um, during training, um, but the majority of my time was spent on our graveyard shifts so or 9 p.m. to 7 a.m. shift. So, you know, you get a different kind of clientele than you do, you know, during days. Mm -hmm. um, so it's all the, the people of the night, we like <laughs> to call them. <laughs> um, but typically with that, you know, it's it involves a lot of, um, you know, people who work the same shift as you. Um, a lot of like the bars and stuff like that is mm -hmm. kind of the, the, the things we deal with mostly. Um, so we, we, we could deal with everything from, you know, disturbances to just working DUI enforcement and kind of everything in between. Um, majority of the, our call volume was what we call domestic, domestic type calls. So it's between, you know, two people in a kind of intimate relationship is primarily the, the biggest 
call volume that we receive is something of a domestic nature. Okay. Um, how would you compare uh, working in Colorado Springs now to working in Westminster? So I would say it's, it's kind of night and day. Um, and the only reason I say that is basically the size of the city, right? So Colorado Springs is the second largest city in Colorado Springs on population. And then the largest city based off of square mileage. So you you have that the that fact that Colorado Springs is um, in retrospect into Colorado in general, right? With, we're not talking about Los Angeles here uh-huh. or uh, New York or something like that. But in in retrospect, you have a extremely large city, extremely large agency, and going up to Westminster. Um, Westminster, I think, is like the eighth largest city in Colorado. Um, not, but that's in perspective, right? Right. Yeah. <laughs> um, so it's a lot, a lot smaller. It's a lot more of a, um, you still get the same types of calls no matter where you go. You're still going to get those domestic type calls. You're still going to get, you know, those random disturbance at the bar and, you know, different things like that. It's just, a, I would say it's a little bit lower in essence that we're not getting the amount of calls um up there that we are down here and that's just sort of the simple fact of the the size of the city Mm -hmm. when you look at you know size of a city you expect a city like you know colorado springs or even looking out outside you know los angeles to receive more types of calls just because there's more people right i mean coming from California, sure. you know, well, how would you compare? And now that you've lived here for a while, I know a lot of people have that concern of, you know, is Colorado Springs safe, you know, and how does it compare to, you know, other towns or cities in America? You know, what's been your experience with that? You live here, so obviously you like it enough. I, I love it here. Yeah. Um, when I kind of backtrack to, we'll get back to that original question, but I kind of yeah. backtrack. Um, when I first got out of college and I was starting to apply to agencies, I applied to a couple in, in California. Um, but you know, I had a lot of family that was living here in Colorado and, uh, you know, Colorado always kind of felt like home to me. You know, I, I spent 10 years here prior and obviously, you know, when you're that young, you know, you, a lot of good memories that you, that you have cause it's mm-hmm. all, you know, yeah. childhood memories. Right. Um, but you know, just talking with family and everything like that, it was something that, you know, I knew I wanted to come back to. And so that's why I started, you know, applying. And then that's, that's why I ended up, you know, coming out back out, you know, getting hired on with CSPD. Um, in general, I mean, Colorado Springs is, is a great community. I mean, if you look at Forbes, you know, ratings of the top cities to live, it always ranks top three, uh, every single year mm-hmm. and it, for valid reasons too. Um, you know, the city's very large in, in perspective to Colorado in general. Um, and there's a tremendous amount to do in close proximity to if you like that kind of big city, but you don't want to be inside the big city. Colorado Springs is great because it's a lot slower pace than, you know, if you're coming from Los Angeles, New York, or wherever you may be coming from and you think about that big city in your state. Mm-hmm. It's it has the size of that big city, but it still has that kind of small, small town feel, even, mm-hmm. even with the size. It's not as dense. Exactly. Yeah. Because you have, it's large population wise, but it's also extremely large with mileage wise. So it's not like you guys are, you know, people are stacked on top of each other. Like you would see in Los Angeles or, you know, Chicago, New York, different things like that. You, you're a lot spaced out. If you out, if you want, you know, a piece of property with land, you can find that here in Colorado Springs. If you like that suburban kind of feel with, you know, you being close to your neighbors and that kind of really close tight knit community kind of feel, we have that too. I mean, we, Colorado Springs is just so diverse when it comes to housing and kind of what you would be looking for. It's a melting pot. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. It's a good way to put it. Very, and diverse in multiple different ways as well. I mean, and the fact that it's only a mile or excuse me, an hour away from Denver too. again, you know, if, if you like that, you know, that large city feel and you want to go visit and you want to go to Broncos games, avalanche games, Rocky, you know, we, it's an hour drive. Mm -hmm. Skiing is your, is your forte just a few hours away from the, the ski resorts. 
and just here in the city alone i mean if you're any anything to do with outdoors i mean you can find it here so oh, you know how to sell the town <laughs> <laughs> i mean there's a reason i live here right i i make that commute up to westminster every day and uh you know i, I have my my coworkers ask me well why aren't you moving up and there, there's reasons why obviously you know living down here it, it feels like home to me and I love this city and that's that's why I choose to live here and make the commute for work. Yeah. Well, good. You have a favorite story to tell? Oh, gosh. <laughs> uh, I mean, so with my time here, I mean, I've done pretty much every call you could imagine from, you know, simple traffic stops to, you know, we I've even dealt with like a homicide investigation. Um, and so... It, you know, there's and everything in between, you know, there's just certain certain people that come to mind. Like we have one that was like Rita, who's our uh, she's a uh, she's one of our transients that live, you know, down southeast. And mm, okay. uh, she's always in her wheelchair. And sh so she has a power wheelchair. And uh, I forget she was like in the middle of traffic. Right. And my sergeant was like right behind her, like in a slow speed pursuit. <laughs> Like behind her, trying to get her to pull over because she was driving in the middle of the road. <laughs> she just did the car behind her, just yeah. driving slow. She's like, Rita, you need to stop. <laughs> Rita, I need <laughs> to talk to you. I think she was like, a, like, sh like in the middle of the, like, you know, she was like a traffic hazard because she was just driving in the middle of the road, like in her in her power. But she's wheelchair. just a known person that you, yeah, you we deal with to... her all the time. So uh, she's one of our our frequent flyers, is what we call them. <laughs> um, and it's just because we. It's mostly like Seven Elevens and the Circle K's and the the come and goes that uh, that call because they don't want her on the property. <laughs> yeah, that makes sense. Uh, well, do you uh, have you noticed? Are there a lot of homeless in Colorado Springs compared to other? Because I know every town and city, the larger it gets, the more homeless uh, people I think you're going to have. But sure. I don't know if Colorado Springs has more than usual. What do you think? Um, I would say just from my experience and my perspective on it, um, I would say mostly due to weather, right? So obviously if you go to like Los Angeles where it's sunny and 75 theoretically every day, mm, <laughs> right? Yeah. You're going to, you're going to have more, uh, a larger ho homeless population because it's more desirable for them to, to thrive and to live right. um, where here when it gets cold during the winter and it's snowy it's not as inducive for them to to kind of thrive and everything like that um i would say generally if you're looking um if you're looking at the city as a whole uh, the the density of like transient population is typically down south um and that's just because that's where resources are for them um we you, you have like mary's kitchen and uh the different uh, uh, Springs Rescue Mission, different things like that, that offer resources to them. Mm -hmm. So if, if obviously, like if you're driving, you know, down south, you'll see a, a little bit larger population. But considering the, like the population and size of the city, I, I would say we're probably a little lower on the end. And again, like I said, that mostly has to do with weather and, you know, different perspectives like that. So. Yeah, that makes sense. So what are you doing up now in Westminster? Yeah, so I'm patrol officer up there. So I'm on currently I'm on their swing shift. So I work 1 p.m. to 11 p.m. Um, to or Wednesday through Saturday there. I just switched over because all last year basically I was uh, on uh, our senior graveyard side, and uh, so I was working uh, Tuesday through Friday, um, 9 p.m. to 7 a.m. Kind of have that. That yeah. mentality where you know I'm not crazy like a crazy morning person, mm -hmm. so I like the the later shifts where I can go in later, I can sleep in, and you know kind of do that thing. Um, so just doing patrol right now. Um, right now I'm on the desk because I'm injured. Um, so that basically entails taking phone reports, so things that can be handled over the phone with kind of limited follow up necessary. So I take a lot of uh, uh, motor vehicle thefts. Uh, harassment reports um you know criminal mischief so you know somebody breaking into your car damaging your property kind of stuff um kind of just cold stuff where it's not like hey the suspect's still on scene kind of situation you know right. 
um, once I get my all healed up and better, I'll go back out and, you know. Still in Westminster? Still in Westminster. Yeah. Yeah. The, the only reason I'm on the desk is because I'm hurt right now. So. Yeah. What made you decide that you, or I guess when did you decide that you wanted to live in Colorado Springs for sure? Was Has it always been something that you knew that you were going to do? Uh, yeah, 100%. So um, obviously, you know, when we first moved out to California, you know, it obviously wasn't my choice. I was 10 and so just kind of following the family. Um, but, uh, you know, as, as I got older, especially like into high school and especially in college, that's, that's kind of where, you know, it was in my mind that, you know, I wanted to go back to Colorado. Um, that, that was kind of the, the huge transition point. Um, cause when I first got into high school, I was my junior or my uh, freshman or sophomore year. My brother, um, had graduated uh, high school and ended up going to CU Boulder. Mm. And so he was out here and then, you know, I finished up my, I finished up high school, started going to college. He graduated college and he ended up staying out here. Um, my dad was living here in the Springs. Um, so there, there was a lot, a lot of family still out here. Um, so that, obviously that was a huge driving point, but you know, like I said before, the, the good memories I had and just remembering, you know, everything from, you know, how great Colorado Springs was. Um, you know, I, I came out here a few times, you know, visiting and, uh, for my college, my brother's, you know, graduation, um, just visiting my dad, different things like that. And just seeing the city and, you know, seeing how much it changed in, you know, those 14 years that I was in California. And I, I would say, you know, changed for the good. Um, it, it definitely expanded a lot, which was kind of a different perspective, you mm -hmm. know, because when I, you know, I grew up on the northwest side of town there in uh, our Rock Rimmon area. And, uh, you know, when I was growing up, Powers was kind of a, you know, kind of just a small road. Mark Shuffle was almost non-existent. I'm pretty sure it was a dirt road when I was uh, growing <laughs> up. Mm -hmm. um, so seeing that, it was it was a huge change, just seeing the expansion of the city and seeing how much it had grown. Um, you know, I was a, I was fortunate enough to be able to talk to some CSPD officers, you know, when I was coming out and visiting and stuff, you know, because obviously that's what I majored in. Um, and uh, just being able to talk to them and talk to them about the city and getting their perspective on things. And they, uh, they, they definitely pushed me towards, you know, wanting to come back out here and applying with them and, and getting brought on and start working here and loved, loved every moment of it. Well, good. I'm, I'm glad you're here. Yeah. Yeah. Me oh, too. What, uh, how did that happen for you when you started your home search or when you knew that you wanted to, uh, buy a house out here. Yeah. So, um, we, my wife and I were currently, uh, renting a house, um, when we came out here. So when we came out here in 2019, um, I kind of got a kind of a short notice by CSPD saying, Hey, you know, uh, cause I originally got extended to the, the following Academy, um, cause they had filled up all the vacancies in their Academy. Okay. They, they had contacted me about, about three weeks out from the start of that, the academy I went to saying, hey, we, a spot just opened up. You were next in line. You want it. So I, I wasn't going to let that opportunity slip by me. So I was like, absolutely. Mm -hmm. I put in my two week notice, um, you know, at my uh, previous job. And, uh, you know, the wife and I were just, just working, you know, you know, working to get everything planned out. You know, we knew this was it in the plans that we were going to be moving out here, but it was such a short notice, um, that it, uh, it, it kind of expedited some things where we didn't have the opportunity to, um, look for a place of residence right at the time. Um, so my, my dad had a house, house, uh, not too far from where I currently live. And, uh, so I, when I came out here, I stayed with him. Him and uh, my stepmother uh, ended up buying a house off of uh, Mark Shuffle there. So they moved out there, but they kept the, the property they were living in. And so we we're renting from them. And uh, you happened to be one of our neighbors. Um, I did. You did, yeah. <laughs> and so, uh, you know, we got talking with you and started hanging out with you more than just a normal, you know, 
realtor, you know, client kind of thing mm-hmm. and became friends and, you know, kids would play and hang out together. And, um, and so when we finally made that decision, um, you know, cause we, we obviously were planning to expand, you know, our family and, and wanted something, you know, that was going to be kind of our own and something that we just didn't kind of fall into essentially, right. Something that we could plan out and, and say, hey, this is kind of what we're looking for in a house. We want, you know, certain criteria in a house. Obviously, I had a little less input of what I wanted. Uh, my big thing was I wanted a three-car garage, and mm-hmm. that's what I got. <laughs> the the wife <laughs> was the big ask. Yeah, the 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 wife's list was a little bit longer, and uh, so uh, when when it was time where we're like, hey, you know, we're ready to kind of expand and spread our wings a little bit, get our own, you know, a place of our own. Um, you know, we reached out to you and you took us open, you know, took us in with open arms and, uh, and, uh, you, you were fantastic. You know, you, you said, you know, asked us, you know, uh, every question under the book you could possibly ask about what we were looking for, you know, the neighborhoods, different things like that. Um, and you, you just put in the legwork for us to help us, you know, find homes that, you know, met our criteria and, you know, you didn't allow us to compromise or anything like that. You put in the, the legwork to help us uh, find the perfect home for us. So, Well, good. I'm yeah. glad. It, yeah. it turned out great. This, this house is really nice. So. It, yeah, yeah. It's, it's definitely big, which I know she, that's kind of what, what the wife was looking for. For me, it was, you know, I, I wanted the three-car garage, and I, I just wanted somewhere I could throw my office, right? And, uh but it, it worked out well because we, we got a little bit more than actually what we were looking for, um, especially because we, you know, we still have family that live out in California that come visit. So, um, you know, we, we have our entire guest suite downstairs, which is, I think, something Kim is very fortunate for, you know, mm. kind of that nice little separation, you know. I think that's really nice to have that extra space. Exactly. Yeah. So they can get up in the morning. We have that full like kitchenette downstairs where they can make their coffee and do what they need to do downstairs. And, you know, we got a level between us. So they, uh, I suppose you could rent that out too. If, theoretically. If you yeah, to. absolutely. Yeah. I mean that, that whole downstairs, I mean, fully, you know, it's, it's a finished basement, you know, um, yeah, I mean, theoretically, we could probably that entire downstairs space rent that out for comfortably thousand a month, if not more, um, just based off of you know market and everything like that. So we could do that. Um, you know, I, I think it's you know depending on every person's a little bit different. Some people are in the market to make money. Some people like for us, it, we we like to have that you know kind of saved for you know we have friends that need to stay over or for family that come and visit. We like that, you know, flexibility of, you know, just having some kind of option for them so they can come stay. But yeah, that's, you're absolutely correct. Definitely something, you know, for people where they want to do some kind of, you know, investment or they, they're concerned about, you know, man, with the interest rate so high, you know, the, it's my mortgage is going to be, you know, X amount of dollars. But, you know, if you're, you're a single individual or just a couple who, you know, want to help reduce that and you have that extra space, you know, and you feel comfortable doing that. That's a, definitely a great option to them. Oh, I think so. Yeah. I, I've been hearing that given that Colorado Springs is expanding, that uh, our police department is just taking over a lot more territory and doesn't have enough people to man. Sure. So, is there a solution to that? Is the department you know, working on, you know, figuring out how to hire more people? You know, have you seen I don't know, people as the police department hiring at this point? Yeah. So CSPD, um, you're right. They, they have been annexing a bunch of land. Uh, to my knowledge, right before I left, they, they annexed a bunch of land way like almost to like the black forest area um so they they've they've been taking on a bunch of land and um it's not exclusive to cspd where it comes to you know limited uh limited officers and resources and stuff like that it's a nationwide problem where you know it's becoming a little bit more difficult to um 
recruit and, and get people into that profession. Um, I, to, from what I've seen, I, I feel like CSPD is doing a great job. Um, you know, after my, cause I came out of the 70th Academy, I think they're on their 77th Academy right now. So there's seven academies after me, mm-hmm. um, that have come out and, um, at every academy that they've, that they've, um, hosted has been completely filled up. So that, that includes, you know, um, when I was in, I don't know if they've changed the limit of number of officers that can uh, be in the academy class, but it was about 84. Um, so, and they, I, to, and what I know, cause m- one of my friends that I worked at in the comm center, the communication center with, mm-hmm. he, uh, he got out about a year ago now from the academy um because he he left the communication center to go sworn and uh so what they're doing is like a rotational kind of thing so when i was going through it was one academy went through the full six months then they waited a couple months you know you know give them a little break and then another academy would start what they're doing now is it's it's like a rotational kind of thing so you have one academy start they do like a 10-week block and then they, they send them off to do, you know, their skills. So, you know, firearms training, driving training, um, defensive tactics, uh, different things like that. Um, and then they bring in another group and to do that. So it's const- it's a constant cycle that they're doing. Um, and, th- and that's their goal is to, to get their, their levels up to full staffing, you know, to help, you know, reduce response times and, you know, be more proactive, you know prevent stuff before it even starts, different things like that. Um, so I know they're, they're, they're working on getting the, the staffing back up by doing that. Um, I know they've been pushing really hard with their recruiting. Um, so their recruiters been, you know, going out to different colleges. Um, their big one that they like to go to is Fort Carson and Peterson Air Force Base. Um, cause at, at most departments, I wouldn't say every department, cause I, I can't speak for every department, but most departments like, you know, prior service, military, um, especially trying to help them transition, um, back to what we would consider civilian life. Mm-hmm. Um, so, you know, their, their recruiters have been making those big pushes, um, at, at those, at different places to, to get, you know, solid qualified, people because obviously during uh the academy you start with 84 by the end of the academy you may end up with only 72 people right just based off of you know academic scores you know whether or not they can pass certain certain portions of the academy mm-hmm. um because i mean academy is extremely physical dem- physically demanding so you know some people may come in there with the mindset it's you know, I haven't, I haven't prepared myself at all, but this should be easy. And then, you know, bail out. So you go from, you know, hiring 84 people and starting the academy with 84 people to maybe 72 people finishing them successfully completing the academy. And then you go into the field training program. Um, and then from there, you know, you may have another, you know, 15 to 20 people that aren't able to, you know, satisfactory you know, complete the academy, mm-hmm. uh, or, uh, the field training program. And so you, you go from, you know, hiring 84 people to realistically, you know, 60 people that are actually hitting the road. So uh, there, there's a lot of components that, um, that go into like police work and hiring and like successful police officers coming out. Right. I mean, you can have 1200 applicants applying for, 84 positions and uh and then based off of you know going through the whole hiring process and backgrounds and you know the polygraph and all that kind of stuff that can mm-hmm. disqualify somebody you have 1200 interested people that dwindle down to 84 or even less depending on the qualifications and you know what you know what comes up during the hiring process to okay. you know you have 1200 interested people and then realistically out of those 1200 people, you only have 60 successful police officers. So, um, you know, I, most departments aren't, aren't looking just to ho- hire bodies, right? They're not just trying to fill positions with unqualified people or just trying to push them through, you know, just to, just to fill, you know, what they need. They, they're, they're looking for good qualified people that are going to be successful with the department that are going to, you know, have strong integrity and uh you know 
perform the job at the the highest of of their abilities. Oh, that's good. I, I'm I'm glad they've got a. It sounds like there's a high standard there. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and obviously, you know, just from my perspective here in Colorado, I, I've seen that some some smaller agencies or even you know out of state agencies might not feel that same way. Maybe they're just like, hey, we just need somebody. You know, we'll we'll work around whatever issues this guy has, kind of thing, and just to just to get a body on the road mm -hmm. and. Uh, just from my perspective, you know, Colorado Springs, Westminster, that that is something they will not do. They will not compromise on is quality of a police officer just to just to fill a slot. Yeah. Well, I'm I'm glad. Yeah. Uh, as it feels like this uh, should be a a video a recruitment video for the police department. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> if you want to join in? Talk to Ryan. Yeah. <laughs> I got connections. Uh -huh. so, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> is anything that you feel like people should know about the police department that is not really common knowledge? I, I would say just in general, obviously the, the big thing is we're, we're humans too, right? Like we, we, when we, if we make a traffic stop on you for whatever the case may be, your headlights or maybe you're just driving awfully, right? You're just an awful driver. Or you're cutting people off or whatever like that. And you start, yeah, Remember, we're just humans too, right? So, um, you know, in in respect to um, the the entire situation, right, and, and the profession in general, there's you know, no profession is perfect, right? There, you're always going to have someone in a certain profession that um, can, I, I would say, alienate the profession as a whole, right? Um, you know, especially on the news, um, everyone watches the news and everyone sees stuff that happens, you know, in different states or, you know, sometimes even in our state and stuff like that. And just to remember that that's not every single officer in that profession, right? So, um, right. There, there's going to be bad eggs, no matter w whether you're, you know, you're working a nine to five at a, a desk job or whatever like that. You're going to have those people that are, you know, who, who aren't up to standard, who, you know, do the wrong thing, who do bad things, but that doesn't mean the whole profession or, you know, everyone that works in that certain thing is like that. Right. Mm -hmm. So just keep that in perspective. Cause obviously, you know, with everything that happens in the news and everything like that, it kind of put paints the, a bad, bad picture for the profession as a whole, or I'd say the majority of everyone I've worked for, you know, in the past almost four years in law enforcement have been amazing people who are there just to help and, um, you know, just be, just be there for the community. So, um, you know, if you get stopped by an officer, you know, it, it's one of those things where, you know, it happens. I've, I've been stopped by, by officers before, you know, I've gotten tickets before, you know, it's, it, it's one of those things where it's, you know, they're, they're just doing their job and, you know, just remember that, you know, we're humans too, you know, mistakes, we, we all make mistakes. Right. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I will say, you know, office, you know, certain situations, yeah, hundred percent. Those those people were bad eggs, and they shouldn't have been in the profession and to begin with. But, um, you know, we're not all like that. Yeah. So, you know, just if you see us, you don't have to fear us. You know, we're we're there to help. Yeah the uh, the news reports you're you're getting a couple of negative stories about something, but on the whole, you're at, the police are here every day. Absolutely. And like you said, there are people just like everybody else and they're just doing their job. And most of the time, everything's going fine and they're doing what they need to be doing, which is serving the people of the city and protecting them. Well, serving the city, serving the people. Both. Yep. Absolutely. But, yeah. Is there anything that you'd like to add? So I would just like to say, you know, thanks for having for having me first of all yeah um you know if anybody who's considering colorado screens obviously you know do your research um you know there's the city is massive so depending on what you're looking for um the the city will accommodate um you know if if your concern or issue is you know crime or whatever like that 
um, you know, do, do your research. Um, CSPD, if you go onto their website, you know, they have a crime map um, mm -hmm. that can show you kind of, you know, what, where certain crime is happening. Um, obviously, I, I always like to say keep that in perspective, right? Um, you can look at a map and, you know, maybe there's like an assault or something that happened, you know, you know, in this area. But keep that in perspective because there's, there's kind of two ways to look at, at crime essentially, right? You have like a known offender and then you have a random act of, of violence or crime. Mm -hmm. um, and just based off of my experience, um, most of the time when crime happens, it's, it's happening based off of like a known offender. So, you know, you and I get into a fight and I punch you in the face. That's an assault, right? Mm -hmm. um, but they don't notate that in, you know, in the crime mapping, essentially. It just shows that there was an assault that happened here. Okay. Right? So even though, you know, or domestic violence, that's a big one that, that starts popping up when, when they show assault statistics and stuff like that, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And it's like, it's not a random act where it's like, I don't know you on the street and I just come up and punch you in the face or something like that. Right? Yeah. It's known and that can even happen with like robberies and stuff like that. You and I, you know, we're doing some shady stuff and I pull a gun on you and, and steal your, your wallet. Cause you know, I lent you $50, you know, a couple of months ago and you haven't paid up. That's considered a robbery technically, but I knew like it, it, it was, it's a different it, kind of it, it's perspective, right? Yeah. Exactly. It's not like you're, you're Joe Schmo on the street and somebody just runs up on you and pulls a gun. Right. Mm -hmm. So when looking at those crime statistics, I always say, keep it in perspective. Right. Um, Cause you can, you, you can have those, you know, uh, um, and this isn't me saying that you can't have random acts of, of, you know, crime occurring. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, I, I'll be the first one to say, you know, Colorado's the number one, uh, is ranked number one in motor vehicle thefts, right? And, you know, um, that's something that legislators are, are working on, you know, making a little bit harsher penalties and stuff like that, which, you know, hasn't come about just as of yet. But I know that's something they're working on because obviously that's kind of a sore eye. Yeah. Um, and that's this whole state of Colorado. That's not exclusive to, to any specific city or anything like that. That's, that's just statewide. Okay. Um, so, um, but so is that, what, what is that? Is that when they're leaving their car running and they steal it or they it, steal it out it, of the parking it, lot? It's any, any of it? In, anything, anything under the sun. So if you're leaving your car puffing, which is against, yeah. it, it is against a lot of leaving <laughs> uh -huh. your car puffing, just yep. to throw that out there to people. Um, so that includes that it includes just, you know, cause some vehicles are considered easier to steal than others. Um, so sometimes, you know, they'll just go find a vehicle that they know is easy to steal. They'll go in the parking lot, you know, get in, break the door lock off and take a screwdriver and turn it. Or I'm sure people have seen the, the TikTok challenge with, uh, there, I remember there being a TikTok challenge about Kias, was it? It was Kias and Hyundais. Those, okay. those were the, the prominent ones. Um, and yeah. they're, uh, yeah, they're, they're the most prominent ones to, to get stolen there. So. Um, another, another thing, if you're, if you're crazy, you know, paranoid that you're going to a house where somebody passed away and, you know, something like that. Mm. Um, if you find a house that you're really interested in, you really like, you can contact, uh, CSPD's records department and request what we consider call a, like premise history. Okay. Um, and that's all public record. And, uh, so you can actually pull the premise history on a house and see what kind of calls for service have been there. So, oh, um, yeah. Okay. And so public record, um, I did that with this house, you know, found out there was two false alarm calls and that was it at this house. So I'm like, all right, I feel comfortable with that. Uh, yeah. There's <laughs> my, my decision here. Nobody's going to come back to this house to exactly. ask for money. Yeah. yeah. There's no money hidden in the walls or anything crazy <laughs> like that. <laughs> candidly asking you about yeah. living here and then you know your experience working with the police department i think that's invaluable to and you know, anybody that's you know moving here that wants to know hey you know how is the crime and safety here how are you know our police officers here good are they doing a good job you know people just want to be reassured at the end of the day yeah absolutely and so i think that's the a big value that you bring here is just being able to explain, yeah, this is how it is, and this is my job, and I'm a person just like you, and yeah. I bought a house, <laughs> a and I, I live, I live here, I love it here, yeah, 
That's great. Well, yeah. I appreciate having you on and yeah, doing this interview with me. Absolutely. I'm glad yeah. I could do it for you. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you got a ton of value out of that interview. Do me a favor. If you haven't already, please click the like and the subscribe button and hit the bell. And I will see you in the next one.